on this American Thanksgiving, and happy Thanksgiving to those of you below the 49th parallel. Um, well, some teams didn't apparently get the whole Thanksgiving vibe and decided to waive some guys. So let's take a look at who got waived. Uh, Jacob Magna is an interesting one in that he's 24. He had one point in 11 games for Anaheim. Obviously, as the team gets healthy, guys get waived. Uh, Magna's out. <clears throat> Even though he's a minus four, he only played 11 games. Somebody somewhere has defensive deficiencies and may very well see him as an upgrade. So he may end up getting claimed due to the fact that defense comes at a premium these days. And, and I understand Anaheim doing this. Anaheim waving him is actually a good thing. It means that they're starting to get healthy. So as they get healthy, the rest of the NHL is going to be on notice. Chris Domenico is interesting-ish in that he has six points in 12 games, and that may pique somebody's interest. But he didn't have a point in his last, last four, and his uh, average ice time dropped. He gets waived because Gabriel Dumont got picked up on waivers by Ottawa yesterday from Tampa. So as a result of bringing somebody in, somebody else has to go, and Di Domenico is the one to go. Uh, he's played 15 games his entire career. He's had six points that entire career, and he's 28. So you're not picking up a guy who's you know going to be this huge, late-blooming superstar, but he may be useful in the utility role. I, I don't think he gets claimed, though. I think we'll end up seeing Di Domenico pass through waivers, uh, and uh, it'll it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, Ottawa is a fascinating team, and obviously, you know, I, I can take a look at them at some point today. But for right now, the Sibo waivers, Di Domenico and Magna. Magna, I'd say there's a 60% chance that he gets grabbed. Di Domenico, I'll say like 20% chance that he gets grabbed on on waivers. Now, Eddie Lacks. The reason that I'm in Calgary outfit, and and let's discuss Lack for a while. So Lack comes over to Vancouver, never drafted, comes over in 2013, plays 41 games, 2.41 goals against and a 9.12 save percentage. This was a year where there were times that he was compared favorably to Roberto Luongo. That's right. Even though the Canucks weren't particularly a great team that year, it was viewed that. Eddie Lack was potentially the better goaltender. And, of course, Lack and Luongo and all of that controversy led to Luongo being traded back to Florida. Lack, in his second year, plays 41 games again, manages to record an 18-13-4 record. His goals against average went from 2.41 to 2.45 in year two, but his save percentage went from 9.12 to 9.21. And it was remarkable because he played relatively poorly to start the season. And then Ryan Miller got hurt and suddenly Lack was fantastic. Couldn't be beat. And coming out of that playoff, uh, when when he, he started playoff games and then he tailed off and then Ryan Miller came back and a lot of fans were upset that Lack didn't have a chance to finish it out, he got acquired by Carolina. His career in Carolina... 901 safe percentage one year, 902 last year, and he was widely regarded as potentially the worst goaltender in the league of all of these starters and backups. I never really agreed with that. This year in Calgary, he's played five games, 5.29 goals against, and an 813 safe percentage. In his last appearance, he allowed five goals on 15 shots. And a lot of Calgary fans came on here and said it wasn't his fault. They didn't blame Eddie. Numbers are merciless. And, you know, it's the anti Niemi argument as well. That that whether you can argue that the defense in front of him let him down or whatever happened, numbers just, they're merciless. And get, Glenn Gullitson doesn't have any faith in Lack. So Lack being waived today doesn't really surprise me. It would surprise me a little bit if Gillies was actually going to be the backup from here, and yet the Flames are on this nice run. The Flames are in a position right now where they can actually legitimately make a claim as the best team in the Pacific. Cal uh, the, the LA Kings have started to fall. Uh, Vegas is, is there. Vegas is in that conversation. But the Flames can actually make a legitimate claim to first place. 
having a backup goaltender with the goals against average above five and a save percentage in the eight in the, the low eight hundreds doesn't get you anywhere near the playoffs. You can you can afford to have a backup that's not as good as your starter. That's standard. When a backup's better than a starter, he becomes the starter. But for Eddie, this could be the end of the line. So the question I have with Eddie is a matter of does he go down and play in the AHL for the rest of the season? Or are we at the stage where maybe Eddie considers going back to the Swedish League? That the Flames consider loaning him out to the Swedish League for the rest of the season? And that's that's a question that you know we'll see answered over the next 40 hours. He probably goes down to the, to the American League. But this is an unfortunate end to the story. He, right now for his career, is in 139 games played. Uh, 55 wins, 55 losses, 18 overtime losses, and a 909 safe percentage, and nine shutouts in his career. So if that's where Eddie's stat line ends, it's not bad, but it, it'd be a shame if it ended there. So I can't see anybody picking him up, even though Carolina's still paying half of his salary. I can't see anybody picking him up. I I still think that there are. Just too many teams that wouldn't take an, take a chance on him right now. And of course, Vegas is always going to get mentioned. Montreal is going to get mentioned. Usual usual suspects. And Florida might get mentioned too. Whoever. Anywhere that you can look and say, well, maybe there's a goaltending op- op- option here, he'll get mentioned. Rangers fans, maybe he's an upgrade on Pavlik. He's not. So... You know, again, American Thanksgiving, it's, it's it's a tough day to find out that you've, you've lost your job. You're being waived. So even though two of the teams that waive guys are in Canada, doesn't necessarily mean the players are in Canada. All the Canadian teams were in American cities last night. So uh, it, it's a da- it puts a damper on your, your Thanksgiving dinner, I'm sure. So let me know what you guys think. Who do you think gets claimed out of any of these guys, if any of them get claimed at all? Again, I'll say, as I said, it's like 60% I'll say on Magna, 20% on Di Domenico, and, and Lack, I'll say 10%. Somebody somewhere might, maybe, potentially, sure, okay, could, but not really. I, I can't see it. All right, thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.